everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel and this is your tip of the week. In some of my sewing tutorials I have gone over darts in clothing but only over one particular type of dart and that's this one right here. So this is your standard dart. It's at a diagonal and it's used in clothing to help shape around the breast area to enhance it. Now for those of you who have never made clothing and you open up your pattern pieces, where the dart is you're going to see a whole bunch of lines like this and it can be overwhelming. In the old days of sewing when I was young and if you bought let's say a size small or a medium, whatever your size was, you'd see two lines. Well nowadays the pattern companies are incorporating all sizes into one pattern piece. So what you do is when you see a dart on your pattern, you look for the size and it's going to be listed along one edge. So your dart includes this one main line right here and then one of these other lines. So when you go to stitch your dart in, what happens is you'll see this pointed edge out here. When you fold it properly, I'm going to try to fold it here, it goes down and looks like this. Now the edge is straight and so it's the uh, dart is wider at this point and it comes to a point out here and then the pattern or your fabric will pucker a little bit so that it will go around the breast area. Now when I was younger and had a much nicer figure, I had a lot more darts in my clothing. And one of the darts that you will see is a dart that's narrow here, comes out to a wider point, and then tightens in here. So your fabric is folded and you stitch on it. And then when you open it up, you will see that it is tighter here but expands out this way. This type of dart is often used in the waist area. You'll also see it in jackets and shirts. So let me show you an example. This is a lightweight denim shirt of mine and I did not make this. This was purchased. So I want to make sure you don't start asking me for the tutorial for that. I don't have it. But here again, this one's really long and this is the back side of the shirt. You'll see how it comes into a point, widens out here the seam and up this way. This is so that it pulls in at the waist to enhance the waist, expands out to go up over your hip, expands out in the upper back for comfort. So this enhances the waistline in the back. This is the front of the shirt. You'll see this same dart. It's up here pretty high. This is where the pocket is. So it starts just under the pocket, help enhance the breast, comes in at the waist, and comes down to a point to open the fabric up to go out over the front of your body. So this is the front side of the shirt on the outside and so this is what it looks like. Now on this denim shirt they also did a top stitch along there and I think that was to help keep that shape really flat. Now this isn't a dart, I call it a tuck. And I used to see these in certain clothing. Now I don't, haven't seen it so much now, but at some point you may want to use a tuck like this. So it's just, this one is about a half inch wide and I've put three in a row. You usually don't see them this close together. They're usually out farther apart. But here's what it looks like on the front. And again, it expands out at the bottom to kind of flare out and up here at the top. So sometimes you'll see this under the bust area in the middle of your torso, again to help enhance the breast, give you plenty of room, and also to flare out. One of the big reasons I'm talking about darts is I get a few people once in a while who ask me about altering their clothes. 
that doesn't fit right and they wish they could change it. So let's say you have a blouse that's very loose fitting. It's a little too loose for you. You would like to take it in somehow to give it a different look. These little um, darts or tucks like this is a good way to start. So you could pinch your fabric in, in that area, especially if you, let's say, want to take it in at the back or in at the waistline a little bit. You still want the blouse to be loose and not too tight, but you want some shape to it. So I would take an older shirt or blouse that you have. Don't take a new one because you want to practice. So practice on old clothing. When you go to stitch it, just do a basting stitch first. Try it on to make sure you like it, it's fitting the way you want it, and then go ahead and stitch it permanently. Now, this is a fabric bowl. I made it to put candy in it. And if you look in the inside, it's got a lot of little tucks to help give shape to this fabric bowl so that it comes upright. This is a microwave bowl cozy. It also has tucks, four of them. There's one on each side. There again, it's to help bring the fabric upright so that it curves around the bowl. This is an Instapot cover, and if, when you look at that appliance, it has a dome shape at the top. So on this, there's many darts on this top portion to help give it a shape to go around the dome. Here's a plastic bowl I have, and I'm using this as a little example how to go about making something that's going to go around a curve. So take a large piece of fabric, and what you're going to do is you're going to pinch the fabric on one side and put a pin in it. Go across to the other side, pinch, and pin it. Now go the opposite way. Pinch, put a pin, pinch, and put a pin. Now you're going to go in between all of those pins and pinch, put a pin in it. And then you would keep adjusting it until you have the fit that you want. So you'll notice that your dart will be, the seam width will be wider up here and narrower down there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and that you understand how to use darts and how to begin making darts all on your own. If you're interested in other tips of the week, you want to scroll down below your YouTube screen, click on show more or the down arrow, and you will see those video links appearing. Also, you will see links down there to all of the projects that I have behind me on the wall. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.